Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about hold entries. Okay guys, we're at 3,000 feet over southern Florida again. What we're going to do is have a look at this briefing on hold entries first of all, and then we'll have a look at how to put it into practice. The hold entry is dependent on the heading of the aircraft as it arrives over the fix relative to the orientation of the hold. This diagram shows a hold with a 270 inbound with right turns. This overlay template can be turned around to work out your hold entry for any hold as long as it's oriented correctly. In this example, if the aircraft's heading is between 200 degrees and 020 degrees, the hold should be entered using the direct entry technique. If the heading is between 020 degrees and 090 degrees, the teardrop technique would be required. If the heading is between 090 degrees and 200 degrees, the parallel entry will be the correct procedure. We will discuss these entries in more detail as the lesson progresses. Okay, so here we are established on a 290 course inbound to the Treasure VOR with the 117.3 frequency set and you can see here that the distance from the VOR is approximately 7 miles. Our heading is 290 uh, as you can see here which I've uh, heading, got the heading bug on. Uh, heading's 290 because we've got zero wind in the simulator and we'll have a look at these hole entries with zero wind first of all. So have a look at this quick video to explain which entry this is going to be and then we'll have a look at how we work this out practically afterwards. The heading of the aircraft is 290. This puts us in the direct entry sector. We must therefore proceed directly to the VOR and then make a normal turn to the outbound leg. So that's a theory and now we can have a look at how to do this in the air. So the hold entry overlay can be translated onto the direction indicator start by putting a horizontal line across the center of your direction indicator. If the hold is a, a standard hold, uh, which means right turns like this one, raise the right side of the line up by 20 degrees and lower the left side by 20 degrees like this. Use the vertical line between the center of the DI and the heading to divide the upper semicircle. This has now recreated the hold entry overlay the large lower segment of the semicircle represents the direct entry. The smaller portion of the upper semicircle is the teardrop entry. The larger portion of the upper semicircle is the parallel entry. All we need to do now is locate the radial of the inbound leg on the DI to see which segment it falls into. Remember that the radial is always measured from the VOR. So in this case the inbound radial is 090 and you can see that 090 or east falls in the direct entry portion of the of the overlay here which means that we just have to do the direct entry okay so here we are over the VOR now all we have to do is make a right turn into the normal holding pattern so I'll start a rate one turn to the right turn to the outbound which in the zero wing conditions is going to be straight to a heading of 090. Now we're established in the hold so all we have to do now is complete the normal hold procedures as per the holding video that I made previously. Now if you haven't seen that video I do strongly recommend you have a look at that video before this one. This one does follow on. And that's it we're now established in the hold so we just continue to the outbound and then start the timing as we would before. And that's the direct entry. Okay guys, so now we're established on a 050 track inbound to the VOR with zero wind in the sim. The heading matches the track, so the heading is 050. And here's the theory. The heading is 050. This puts us in the teardrop entry sector. Once over the VOR, the aircraft must be established onto a track of 30 degrees less than the outbound track of the hold. You should adjust this track for wind. This is then flown for one minute, adjusted by one second per knot of headwind or tailwind component. Once the time is up, the aircraft should be turned to establish onto the inbound track to the VOR. Then the normal hold procedures apply. 
Okay, so how do we work this one out? So again, we put the horizontal line on the DI, raise the right side by 20 degrees, lower the left side by 20 degrees. Imagine that vertical line coming from the center, which is already pretty much there for us on the DI. Look for the, the radial of the inbound, uh, which is 090, even though the inbound is 270. Remember, the radial is always from the VOR, so it's 090 and that's falling within the smaller sector there which is the teardrop sector so let's talk when we get a bit closer to the VOR and then I'll show you how to execute this okay guys so we've got uh, just over three miles to go to the VOR now uh, you can see we're on the 050 track inbound 050 heading we've worked out that it's a teardrop entry I'm on OBS2 here I've got set 060 um, course which is going to be what I'm going to fly outbound. That's 30 degrees less than the outbound track of the hold, as already discussed. So as we come over the top of the VOR, what I'll do is I'll make a right turn and track this 060 uh, radial outbound from the VOR. We do that for one minute, as there's no wind in the sim, it's going to be exactly one minute. Then we make a right turn, like inbound, uh, on the 270 course inbound to the VOR. So autopilot's coming off and we just continue to fly this track inbound to the VOR. We've got uh, one mile to go so we can skip ahead a little bit and join me as we get over the top of the VOR. Okay so we are over the VOR. Now I'm going to make that right turn to the 060 heading and now I'm looking at OBS2 and I'm going to track outbound from the VOR on this uh, track. So 060 heading should do it just about. I'm going to start the timer now. And now all I need to do is just continue tracking this outbound for one minute. OBS1 I'm going to set up with the 270 inbound track for the inbound of the hold. And after that minute expires it'll be a right turn back onto that 270 track. So you see I'm a little bit to the right of the radio that I want to be on, so I'm going to just come to the left side of the heading bug, and that should bring the needle back into the middle. I've set up 270 on OBS1 there. That needle's coming back into the middle as well, so that's looking good. 10 seconds to go and basically what we're doing here is flying up the gate if you watch the uh, first video I made on VOR holds uh, you'll know what the gate is if not you might want to check that video out there's the minute expired so we're going to make that rate one turn now to the right to establish ourselves onto the inbound track fix the heading bug as well. Now we the 270 or approximately 270 heading inbound. Depending on the wind correction. With no wind in the same it should be exactly 270. And it's pretty much the same technique now as if we were coming around onto the inbound track if we were just holding normally. So we're just going to keep an eye on that OBS as we come around the corner here just to make sure that uh, it's tracking about right. So we've got 90 degrees to go. So in about 20 degrees, hopefully that OBS will start moving in. It, uh, the CDI is moving in, that's good. Now it's just a matter of timing it so we get on that radial at about the right time. So actually it looks like we might go through it. So I'm just gonna increase that rate of turn just slightly as we come round to the west heading that should work out just about right so we're on the radial now we're on the heading so I'm going to level the wings onto that west heading here there we go and now we just need to track inbound over the top of the VOR and then we just enter the hold normally as before okay guys now we are established on the 140 track inbound to the VOR you can see the heading is 140 as well. Still got zero wind in there. 
So let's have a quick look at the theory. The heading is 140. This places the aircraft in the parallel entry sector. Once over the VOR, the aircraft must be established onto a track opposite to the inbound leg of the hold. You should fly this track for one minute adjusted by one second per knot of headwind or tailwind component. Once the time is up, for a standard hold, a left turn is made inside the hold to establish onto the inbound track to the VOR. And then the normal hold procedures apply. Okay, so again, we lay that horizontal line on the direction indicator. We bring the right side up by 20 degrees, the left side down by 20 degrees. Imagine our vertical line going up and then locate the radial of the inbound. So remember that it's always from the VOR. So the radial of the inbound is 090, which is now shown over in the larger upper sector here which is the parallel entry sector. So that means we have to do the parallel join. Now, how have I got it set up? So I've got the 140 inbound on OBS1. So we use that to track all the way to the VOR. On OBS2, I've got 090 radial set up. So what that means is when we get over the VOR, I will switch to OBS2, and then I will track that 090 radial outbound for one minute, as we saw in the clip just now. Now I've got zero wind in here, as I said, so we'll track it for exactly one minute. Then we'll make a left turn inside the hold, back around to intercept the uh, 270 track inbound to the station. Okay, so we're now over the VOR, so I'm going to start that left turn now to the 090 heading to intercept that 090 track away from the VOR. Now I'm using OBS2 in order to track this. So you can see that I'm actually to the right side of the radial according to this. It's still a little sensitive, so I'm not going to make a massive correction. We'll just come to the left side of the heading bug though, so that we just make sure that we get back on that track. There we go. So I'll just leave the heading around about here, level the wings, and I will start the timer. I need to go outbound for one minute, plus or minus any wind correction. So, in this example here, I've actually left the wind as zero in the sim, so it shouldn't need much wind correction. So we'll just leave the heading like this to re-intercept that 090 track away from the VOR, and we'll just fly outbound for a minute. I'm going to set OBS1 up for the 270 inbound to the VOR. There's the 270 inbound setup. And you can see that needle's uh, coming in quite nicely there for the 090 radio. It's okay to be slightly on the unprotected side on the parallel join here. When we get to the minute, what we do is we start a left turn to intercept the inbound track. So I've got the inbound track set up on OBS1. So I'm now switching back to OBS1. I'm starting a left turn and heading of about 225 should be sensible in order to intercept the inbound track. So we just keep this rate one turn going now while scanning the OBS. So you can see it's giving us a fly left indication which is correct sensing for being inbound. So that's actually correct. So as we come around, you'll see in a second that what we need to do is go through the west heading, and then that will get the OBS, uh, that will get the CDI back into the middle for us. So it's just a matter of keeping this turn going now until we re-intercept that inbound track. There we go. So we're just coming through west, and I'm thinking about a heading of 225 should do it for us. So we'll set a heading bug for around about that that figure. So we go through the west heading, through 240 there, and level the wings somewhere around here. And I'm going to hold the wings level here, and the OBS should start to come back in towards the center. So we're about two miles away from the VOR, just over two miles. So if I just hold this heading, should re-intercept that inbound radial for us quite nicely.
Now the trick is, don't get too impatient with it, because if you use too big of an intercept, then you'll go straight through it onto the unprotected side. So there's the CDI starting to come in, so I'm going to start that right turn now to intercept the 270 inbound track. There we go. So I'll give it about 10 degrees there just to settle itself down. So we'll fly 260 here and then it will come back into the center. And then we'll be established on the inbound. So we've got one mile to go to the VOR. Pretty much central now. So I'll hold that 270 heading. There we go. And now it's just a matter of going over the VOR and then just flying the hold as we have previously. And we should be able to be going over the VOR momentarily. There we go. So we're pretty much over the VOR now. So it's just a matter now of turning to the outbound. That's the basic hold entries with zero wind. Join me next time when we'll look at joining different holes, both standard and non-standard, with wind from various directions. Please like and subscribe if you would like to stay up to date with the content.